Item 5 on the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn, and in conjunction with the Business Committee, we have been given leave to Mr Keith Buchanan to raise the matter of roads infrastructure in Mid-Ulster. The proposal of the topic will have 15 minutes. As this is Keith Buchanan's first opportunity to speak as a private member, I would remind the House that it is the Convention that a maiden speech is made without interruption. I call Keith Buchanan. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I appreciate the opportunity to address the House on uh, my first uh, opportunity. And uh, it's been a great pleasure to be elected in Ulster, and uh, to the shock of some, I might add, but a great pleasure for me. And I'll go straight into this uh, debate. So, I welcome the opportunity to highlight the road infrastructure in my constituency and the need for additional resources to maintain and upgrade the network. Before I deal specifically with Mid Ulster, I welcome the Rural Roads Initiative and the £10 million that has been allocated to it. And I have seen the evidence of this personally in my own area and all over Mid Ulster. And I'd like to thank the Minister for attending this, evening, this afternoon's debate. In previous mandates, we all felt the brunt of budget cuts that resulted in grass verges not being cut, street lamps not being repaired, and cutbacks to essential road repair programmes. The previous Minister, my colleague Michelle McElveen, began to rectify this problem by focusing on the appropriate use of her remaining budget when she took office and on ensuring that internal efficiencies were made. She reviewed her department's budget lines and areas of ex uh, expenditure to ensure that as much money as possible was available for high priority activities, such as patching and street lighting maintenance. She also announced that from the beginning of January 2016, an additional £3.2 million of resource funding and £2 million of, uh, of capital funding was reprioritised for essential maintenance activities. This was good news to everyone and it helped the local economy and I hope that the current minister will continue to improve the infrastructure. Every week I receive complaints and inquiries from constituents about def defects, grass cutting and general road maintenance. Our rural roads are essential links for our farmers, rural dwellers and those going to work or delivering their produce to market or buyers. They have a fundamental role to play in Northern Ireland's economy and it is only right that specific attention is paid to maintaining them. We must remember that a properly maintained road network helps to reduce potential fatalities or serious injuries on our roads. According to a report by PSNA Statistics Branch for 2015, the Mid Ulster Police area sadly accounted for the highest number of collision fatalities, with a total of nine killed in the district and a further 44 seriously injured. While I'm not saying that poor roads maintenance was a factor in any of these sad fatalities, we must ensure that our roads are to the highest possible standards. Most road traffic collisions fatalities happen on rural roads, and of the 74 total road deaths in 2015, 57% 42 occurred on rural roads. Rural dwellings, dwellers do not have the same access to public transport. In Mid Ulster, we have no railway services, and buses do not serve many of our rural communities, at least not on a consistent enough basis. Access to those services can be a big challenge, and it is vital that these communities have a properly maintained road infrastructure. Sadly, the road infrastructure of Mid Ulster has seen the lowest capital investment in the Western Division in the last 10 financial years. The rural road network of Mid Ulster has had some improvements over recent time. The new Macrofelt bypass, due to open, I believe, on Thursday of this week, is a six kilometre carriageway linking Castle Dawson Roundabout with the Moneymore Road, is expected to carry 14,000 vehicles per day and thereby reduce traffic congestion in Macrofelt Town Centre. This significant investment will help improve road safety, reduce congestion, and improve journey times. The new road is welcome, news especially for those who use this route <coughs> daily. And the DUP team of local councillors and myself have welcomed this improvement, but are also committed to highlighting the need for further improvements to the road network. I welcome the need for the much needed Cookstown bypass, as this would help reduce journey travel times along the busy north to south, Col south Coleraine to Katie A29 corridor. Unfortunately, sometimes it is quicker to travel between Dungannon and Belfast, a distance of 42 miles, rather than travelling the 20 miles between Dungannon and Macrofelt. The removal of the traffic, the removal of the thorough traffic from the town centre would assist in reducing the conflict between strategic and local traffic by approximately 10 minutes, therefore assisting in the reduction of both congestion and the risk of accidents. These benefits would be expected to improve the quality of life for residents and attract more visitors and shoppers to the historic town of Cookstown improving our local economy. This project should be part of an overall strategy to improve the key transport and link corridors across Northern Ireland and would demonstrate the need to rectify regional 
to Sparta and reverse decades of underinvestment in infrastructure west of the Bahn. Sadly, the former Cookstown District Council area was consist consistently in the lowest area of capital investment in the last 10 years. The vital A29 Cookstown Bypass project would help the re uh, region significantly, not only from a strategic perspective and at a local level, but also by providing vital jobs in the local construction industry. It had been hoped that this would be delivered within the period of between 2013 and 2018. I welcome the Minister's earlier comments and look forward to this project being developed. 40% of world manufacturing wet material handling, e.g. stone crushing equipment, block making equipment is sourced within and manufactured in Mid-Ulster. And for us to remain world-class providers and employers, the road infrastructure needs to be up to world-class standard. Our rural roads network needs to be able to cope with the HGV vehicles that are needed in this industry. A never expanding agri-food industry within Mid-Ulster, for example, Cairo Foods is the biggest uh, pork slaughter facility in the United Kingdom. Our business parks need additional investment on an exceptional infrastructure network to allow this vital industry to grow and survive. These industries provide job opportunities within Mid-Ulster, which is the fastest and youngest growing population in Northern Ireland. All these world-class business, businesses provide employment opportunities to thousands and have continued to expand despite the poor roads. I call upon the Minister to deliver for the people and the businesses of Mid-Ulster and improve our rural road infrastructure. From our nearest attraction, the Seamus Heaney home place in Balaki, Mid-Ulster's own titanic building, and the many historical sites around our beautiful constituent of Mid-Ulster, to the many excellent outdoor activities that are on offer, there is something on offer to all. From the local to the international tourist, but our rural road infrastructure must be fit for purpose. We need to develop the tourism industry of Mid-Ulster and utilise our natural attractions from the Spurn Mountains or Loch Ney shores and our many excellent forests, including Dava Forest. Only with an improved rural infrastructure and the proper maintaining of grass verges will be able to show off our outstanding natural landscape to the maximum. I'd like to congratulate the member on his uh, opening speech um, and thank him for it. And all other speakers will now have eight, up to eight minutes. I call Sandra Overend. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal, or Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. My apologies for that. Um, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion. And I thank the member for raising the topic and congratulate him on his maiden speech. I'm pleased that the Minister is here this afternoon to respond to the debate. Indeed, Mid Ulster is a hub of uh, manufacturing and engineering industry in Northern Ireland. Uh, indeed, recent figures have said that 27% of all people that are employed in Mid Ulster are within the manufacturing base. And so it's important that the appropriate roads infrastructure is in place to allow our businesses to transport large and heavy products and machinery to customers across Northern Ireland, to the Republic of Ireland, and to the ports with ease in order to develop and grow vital exports and, and the export markets. At present, this is problematic, and I have even heard of goods being transported right across the constituency of Mid Ulster and towards the ports um, of Warren Point because of heavy problems, heavy load problems uh, on the motorways. Um, this was a surprise to hear, and I certainly think that that's an issue that uh, the Minister and his officials should continue to look into. You know, it had been raised um, uh, uh, last year at some stage. Many of our local businesses are also big players on the European and global stage, so we'll very much welcome improvements in this area. And indeed, roads infrastructure pro pro projects provide employment to many of the construction sector businesses within my constituency. And so a strategic plan is very much welcome for employment purposes. Can I at this stage just welcome the completion of the Markerfeld Bypass um, to be officially opened this Thursday, I believe. This will be good news for the town of Markerfeld and should go a long way towards reducing the heavy traffic congestion. The improved road safety, speedier journey times and reduced congestion should all bring benefits for the people of Markerfeld and the surrounding area. It was fitting that it was an Ulster Unionist Roads Minister who delivered on this project and indeed cut the first sod and I want to once again commend my colleague Danny Kennedy, MLA, for that. As his Assembly Private Secretary at that time, it was a privilege to be part of that historic first step. The impending progression of the A6 project is also welcome, stretching from the end of the M22 to the Castle Dawson roundabout and on toward Londonderry. The A6 is a key transport route for Mid Ulster and beyond. 
Again, this has been something that I've been calling for long before I was even an elected representative. And I know that the former Roads Minister, Danny Kennedy, had progressed that project as far as he could without the capital funds being made available to it. So it is pleasing to see that that work is now coming to fruition. I have worked with a number of landowners, farming businesses and officials with regard to this scheme to ensure that those who have concerns regarding the project have those concerns addressed. It is important that the Minister and his officials work to resolve these outstanding issues so that no one is disproportionately or adversely affected by this project and indeed any future infrastructure projects in Mid Ulster. Looking to the future, there is much that can and should be done to improve roads infrastructure in Mid Ulster. Before the end of the previous mandate, on the floor of this House, I called for the then uh, Minister for Regional Development to reprioritise the importance of the A29 to a key transport corridor and to make the necessary improvements on the road to ensure that it is fit, for, um, fit to service the needs of the manufacturing base in Mid Ulster, which, as I previously touched upon, is continuously growing and developing. I would repeat that call to the current minister and ask that he considers upgrading that A A29 road, which is currently deemed a link corridor to a key transport corridor in his future priorities. A future bypass was first proposed uh, almost 40 years ago, Madam uh, Deputy Principal Swigger, and despite a preferred route for the road being announced in 2010, the proposal remains on the shelf, and I would urge the Minister to revisit these plans, which again would bring real tangible benefits for local residents, businesses and commuters. With the imminent completion of the Markfeld bypass, many people have predicted that the next travel bottleneck uh, will come to be the village of Moneymore. With my constituency office located there, I'm well aware of the levels of traffic that pass through there on a daily basis and the congestion uh, on the main streets coming through um, and with the parking there as well is, is an issue. And I would urge the Minister to look at that consideration in the future. Improvements such as these would not only help the businesses in Mid Ulster but would also create a better flow of traffic for all road users, for those living in the towns affected, as well as those coming uh, to the constituency on business, to visit friends, relatives, um, for tourism aspects, as the proposer had mentioned, um, a good number of those, and to shop on our, our local towns and villages. Um, I mentioned uh, previously since the Madam uh, Principal Deputy Speaker has given me a bit of extra time, I just wanted to raise another um, couple of issues that um, I might have mentioned to the Minister during topical question time today. And we, we talked about the A29, um, the possibility of having uh, overtaking lanes and, and slow lanes. Um, and it's, that A29 really is a key transport corridor. And I realise the Minister recognises that it, it leads right from Coleraine right through to Armagh. Um, and it's very important, but there also is, is a matter of uh, speed in some of the local villages. Um, and I would ask the Minister if he would look specifically at uh, the village of Desert Martin. Um, I know the previous, previous Ministers have installed some um, measures to slow traffic coming into that village, but it still remains a concern. And I would be interested to talk to the Minister uh, about this particular um, village with uh, with a plan to look at other aspects that, that could, be, could be brought in line. Um, there are speeding problems in other uh, villages across Mid Ulster too. You could name Castle Dawson as well, but um, I think this speech could, could very quickly um, turn into a list of, of wishes uh, to the Minister. But as well as capital projects, it is essential that our local roads are well maintained and roads issues are frequently raised by constituents who rightly expect us to lobby Transport NI and to hold the Minister to account. It is vital that a long-term strategic approach and a, a degree of um, planning is adopted. Uh, for example, the Sherry Groom Road uh, near Cookstown is it's an example of um, a road along boggy lands. And it's a feature of many roads across the rural constituency um, where the roads very quickly uh, develop into uh, wavy um, and it's a road then that's unsafe for heavy vehicles, lorries and agricultural vehicles and we need to really look and plan ahead and not just cover over the cracks. 
um, so that if there is funding available, we can to look to look to the foundations of the, those roads and to uh, to improve those for the longer term. To conclude, Ms. Uh, Madam. Principal Deputy Speaker, the roads network across Mid Ulster continues to require significant investment, both in terms of new infrastructure schemes and to address historic maintenance problems. And the Minister will not be surprised to hear that I will continue to lobby him to ensure that the entire area receives a fair share of funding for new projects as well as ongoing roads maintenance. Thank you. And first of all, before I get into my prepared piece, I would like to congratulate uh, Keith Buchanan on his maiden speech and I wish him well for his time ahead here in the Assembly. Um, I also want to thank, thank you for bringing this uh, adjournment debate to the, on infrastructure in the Mid-Ulster area to the floor. I meet regular, regularly with uh, local officials on matters of road maintenance and safety and want to, at the beginning of my contribution, to acknowledge my appreciation for their time and effort. There can be no uh, substitute for meeting on site to get a proper understanding of the situation and the impact that it has, and, it always, and it's always refreshing when problems are approached with a can-do attitude. Travelling daily through, throughout the constituency, I am well aware of the state of our road networks, particularly roads, uh, rural roads such as the Five Mile State. And I want to mention the Five Mile State because with its collapse and verges and large number of potholes, and as the previous speaker talked about waves, you'd, think you'd be excused for thinking there that you were in a small boat in a rough, stormy sea. So you know, that's, the, that's my experience of that road. <laughs> so uh, this is just an our example, or one example, of the years of neglect and historical underinvestment west of the band. The decision to the previous mandate, in the previous mandate to reduce spending on street lighting, verge cutting and maintenance to rural roads is well evidence the length and breadth of the constituency and will take substantial investment to catch up again. Like many of the members here, my office regularly deals with constituents' queries regarding long overdue uh, repairs, damage to vehicles as a result of and during the, and as a result during the winter months issues of lighting, gritting and flooding. But thankfully, we are beginning to see progress. And I want to commend uh, the Infrastructure Minister, Chris Hazard, for his commitment to addressing these, under, these underinvested investments. Uh, already he has announced a 10 million road improvement package that will target around 1,000 rural roads across the north. We have also had confirmation that he will invest 18.8 .8 million on roads schemes in the Mid Ulster Council area, and this is all to be very welcomed. Over the last few months, we have heard announcements of £250,000 in bridge strengthening and widening project at Mulltown Bridge in Mahara, 300,000 major carriageway and hard shoulder surfacing scheme on the Glen Chain Road, and the A6 Ranelstown to Castle Dawson Julian project currently in hold pending the outcome of a judicial review, but long awaited, might I add, by 18,000 uh, users per day. Uh, and the A31 Marafal bypass scheme, which will open on Thursday. Of course, there is much still to be done. I have already brought a number of issues to the Minister's attention, such as the need for, as the previous uh, speakers have spoken of, the need for a bypass for Cookstown and money more. The upgrading of the A29, which is the main corridor through the Mid Ulster, and the need for an increase in capital spend for new lighting projects. I am well aware, however, that there will always be a gap between what needs to be done and what the budget allows for. Continued Tory austerity and prospe prospect of leaving the EU will have a serious impact on the funding that might be available for infrastructure projects such as those outlined. And I want to stress the need for continued investment uh, to support business and grow our local economy. I am confident that the Minister, by his announcements thus far, will not forget nor neglect uh, constituencies such as Mid Ulster in this uh, manner previously seen. In the manner previously seen, Kermagut, thank you. Kermagut, the Irmsa er Patsy McLone. I call Patsy McLone. Kermagut, the Frio last can call you. Thanks very much, uh, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, and I, I would take the opportunity to thank. Uh, Mr. Buchanan for a dealing of this particular issue and making it his maiden speech as well. I thank him for that. It's something very dear for those of us who <clears throat> have represented the area for quite a considerable time. 
uh, rural roads and rural infrastructure is crucially important to not only the social, the educational, but also the economic development of, of our constituencies. Um, it provides us the opportunity to debate roads infrastructure in Mid-Ulster, but I want to begin my remarks by acknowledging the progress that has been made in what has long been a neglected area of the North when it comes to investment in infrastructure, investment indeed in other things, but especially in infrastructure. Indeed, the last significant progress to be completed in Mid-Ulster was the Tomb Bypass, which was opened in 2004. That interim measure still awaits the completion of the A6 duelling from Castle Dawson to Ranaldstown uh, to be fully effective. And I welcome the recent movement on the A6 project. Securing funding has proven to be a major stumbling block for a much needed infrastructural project, and we have had uh, impending or threatening court actions around the place. Um, but it's, it is to be hoped that a satisfactory resolution can be found quickly to the objections raised to the Minister's preferred route. I also welcome the progress on the Marafeld Bypass. This is a project that has been around for longer than some members of this chamber, I would have to say. Uh, so I do welcome the fact that it is finally nearing completion, and I, I look forward to welcoming the, the Minister to the constituency on Thursday to do the dutiful and cut the ribbon on that road. Um, uh, it will provide a welcome respite for the town and its residents from the many heavy goods vehicles that have been forced to negotiate uh, in the Castle Dawson Road, up Broad Street and around the Diamond for many, many years. As Chair of the Assembly's All-Party Group in Construction, <clears throat> as well as representative of the people of Mid-Ulster, I do welcome these projects, the jobs they bring and the economic boost and support for economic development that they provide within the constituency. However welcome these developments are, and they are to be welcome, they do represent choices made by the Minister and the Executive. So while the Executive prioritises high-profile schemes like the A6 and A5, another major town and has been referred to in the constituency, Cookstown, and I was on the Cookstown Council from uh, 1993 to 2006, and the bypass came up year after year after year after year. So if the Minister could see fit to doing something about that, but Mrs Overend has rightly referred to, to something that will occur now, and that is that the traffic as a consequence of good progress and welcome progress via the Marafelt bypass will now move that much quicker to money more and create a very substantial bottleneck in money more, which is already quite pressurised with traffic at particular times of the day. But this will inevitably uh, continue. So I don't know what sort of measures can be taken or if the, the uh, engineers within uh, the department have been projecting ahead and looking at this to see how best they can make sure that in alleviating one problem that another problem isn't bunged into money more. It's inevitably, I suppose it's, it's more work and we, work that we would like to see done. So that's just, I'm just flagging that up for the Minister's attention if he isn't already aware of it. Um, the project in Cookstown, it has been around for almost as long as the Marafeld Bypass and is, and indeed, indeed for anybody who have an office in Cookstown, I'm in Cookstown frequently, <clears throat> and for anybody who watches the traffic as it uses uh, the unofficial bypass around Cookstown, the Westland Road, and how that can be really chock-a-block at most times of the day, but particularly in the morning and later on, uh, around about five, six o'clock, it is incredible, and it makes the case for a decent bypass like Mockerfeld has. So it has, has, after many years in gestation, been parked indefinitely. So I welcome the progress where it has been made, and we do need to ask again as to help with that economic, social and development within the constituency to make sure that we have that proper roads network. Um, it, has, um, it has become a standard now that when criticised for what are political decisions, ministers complain of cuts to their budgets or cuts to the block grant. But it is the responsibility of the executive to make the case for sufficient funding to the Treasury, and it is the responsibility of individual ministers to make the case for sufficient funds to the executive. It has been rumoured that there is likely to be some sort of infrastructural funding announced via Westminster, so I do hope, if that comes, Minister, that you will be pitching hard for that to happen and for a good slice of that action to come to the north and every confidence in your, your ability to do so. Um, 
that's what it is to be in government. And for our part, the SDLP has repeatedly proposed alternative sources of funding for necessary investment and in infrastructure. We have done so in the past and we will do so again. That said, matters inevitably, and I am sure the Minister has done a scoping exercise within his own department, those matters will become more complicated if the Executive allows Northern Ireland to be dragged out of the EU against the overwhelming majority of the people of the North. I believe the Minister himself quoted a figure to this Assembly last month of a loss of funding for infrastructure of some 300 to 400 million in the event of a Brexit. It won't be enough for the Minister or his party to throw up their hands in outrage if that loss of funding is allowed to materialise. It is the Executive's responsibility to prevent and hopefully argue the case as I've outlined. It's a challenge for the, the Executive to argue the case for the North uh, to the Exchequer in Westminster. Finally, to return to the subject, this Assembly debated recently on an SDLP motion, the Road Structural Maintenance Budget, often neglected but more important in many ways than the headline-grabbing high-profile schemes. Maintenance of the road network in a rural constituency like Mid-Ulster is vital to the rural communities and that rural economy. I will not repeat the arguments this Chamber heard during that debate, but I am sure all members who represent and indeed live in those rural communities will realise that on occasion you simply can't go anywhere. One pothole can trigger off a whole series of emails from constituents who have to live on that road, and they too have an entitlement to a decent road surface and network in their own areas, particularly in areas such as our own, where there are pretty densely populated rural areas. But I will point out that the problems created not by addressing the road maintenance budget deficit and the absence of sufficient funding on a yearly basis simply to adequately maintain the existing road network are most particularly experienced in rural constituencies like Mid Ulster. The rural road network has been starved of investment over a long, long, long time. I'm not for a second going to lump this at the door of the Minister. Um, it has been historic uh, discrimination in some cases previously in the past and neglect subsequently of our rural areas. And I do know that the Minister has allocated some funding for the repair of rural roads uh, this year, um, but um, the amount, and it was £10 million, I think, maybe that Mr Millen referred to, um, it has been estimated from speaking to engineers that £130 million would be required to bring that rural roads network at least up to some sort of reasonable standard. Over the past year, the number of claims made by drivers for damage called by, caused by potholes on road, his remarks roads to has been more than doubled. So, um, I will conclude on that, and I thank the, the member for bringing the motion before the Chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and Tara Infrastructure. I call Chris Hazard, Minister of Infrastructure. And, and can I take this opportunity to thank the member for bringing the motion to the House uh, and wish him well in his time uh, as a member uh, and also to welcome the opportunity to speak on this issue and its uh, importance to the, the people of Mount Ulster. As a Minister for Infrastructure, I, along with my executive colleagues, work hard to support and drive economic recovery across all parts of the North. And I am particularly keen to redress the infrastructure deficit west of the ban. This motion rightly highlights the importance of transport infrastructure, which in the north is very much road oriented, be it bus based public transport, freight, commuting, leisure travel, or cycling. My department is taking forward a balanced programme of improvements to the strategic road network that will make a significant difference to all communities in the north and greatly benefit the wider economy. Recent levels of funding have allowed my department to advance a number of schemes through the various development stages to construction, including a number of schemes in the Mid-Ulster area. I'm delighted to say that the construction of the £35 million A31 Marterfeld bypass is now substantially complete. The scheme comprises approximately six kilometres of a two plus one carriageway to facilitate overtaking and single carriageway extending from the A31 Moneymore Road to the Castle Dawson Roundabout on the A6. And indeed, I am looking forward to officially opening the scheme later this week. The A6 Derry to Belfast corridor is also of strategic economic importance, providing an essential road link between the Belfast metropolitan area and the North West. My department is currently progressing two separate projects on the A6 route to improve connectivity. The Derry to Dungiven and Randallstown to Castle Dawson dueling schemes, the latter of which course being in the Mid Ulster area. 
The Randallstown and the Castle Dawson scheme comprises two distinct sections of dual carriageway located either side of the A6 tomb bypass. A 7.3 km section from the end of the M22 to the eastern end of the tomb bypass and a 7.4 km section from the western end of the tomb bypass to the existing A6 Castle Dawson roundabout, so linking to the new Macrofelt bypass. In August, I was delighted to announce my decision to proceed with the substantial £160 million scheme. However, on the 27th of September 2016, papers were lodged with the High Court to apply for leave for judicial review in relation to this project. While I am disappointed that a scheme set to benefit some 18,000 daily commuters and their passengers every day has been challenged, with any project of this scale, there are always the possibilities of a legal challenge from those who may be dissatisfied with my department's proposals. At this time, it is too early to determine the impact and progression of the scheme and any knock-on delay to the commencement of construction, which had been anticipated to be later this month. The, prefer the preferred route for the A29 Cookstown Bypass was announced in 2010. This scheme entails the construction of approximately four kilometres of new single carriageway from the Dungannon Road roundabout south of Cookstown to a proposed new roundabout on the Moneymore Road at the north of the town. The scheme will also include sections of 2 plus 1 and differential acceleration lanes to facilitate safe overtaking opportunities. Development of this significant project had been deferred owing to financial constraints, but as Minister I am keen my department progresses the scheme. I am currently engaging with officials about progression to the next stage, the publication of the draft statutory orders and environmental statement. The southern section of the A5 Western Transport Corridor between Ballygolly and the border at Ochnacloy is in the middle area also. Following the public consultation of the new draft statutory orders and environmental statement, a public inquiry into the A5 scheme was announced and this remains on schedule to open on 4 October 2016. A 3.4 km bypass of Five Mile Town has been identified in the Strategic Road Improvement Programme, which will alleviate congestion in the town. Progression of this scheme, too, is subject to future budget settlements. The upcoming revision of the Regional Strategic Transportation Network Transportation Plan and the development of local transport plans in conjunction with Council's local development plans provide a good opportunity to refresh the Strategic Roads Improvement Programme in line with the latest technical evidence, local development pressures and the programme for government priorities of economic growth and social equality. This may provide my department with an opportunity to relook at scheme prioritisation and indeed at new schemes also. Up until now, I have spoken about new and proposed schemes, and I want to turn to maintenance of the existing network. Maintaining our roads and footways is essential to the social and economic well-being of the North, and continues to be one of my department's highest priorities. I am pleased to say that the additional capital funding was prioritised by the Executive for road maintenance as a part of June monitoring. As a result, and in recognition of the particular deterioration of rural roads, in June I announced a £10 million rural roads initiative to target maintenance measures at around 1,000 locations on our rural roads. I am pleased to say work on these schemes is now well underway and about one third of the identified roads have been dealt with. The current structural maintenance budget for the Mid Ulster Council area is some £8 million, and this includes approximately £1.5 million which has been allocated as part of the rural roads initiative. This will see a significant number of smaller schemes delivered on the local road network across the council area. In addition, within the Mid Ulster District Council area, my department has delivered an extensive resurfacing programme, including schemes on the A6 Glen Sheen Road, the A4 Barrow Road Clogher, and A29 Northland Road on Gallon, as well as surface dressing 1.1 million square metres of road across the area. Members will be aware that the department continues to face budgetary pressures on resource funding for the day-to-day -day road maintenance services. Thankfully, an additional £5 million was allocated as part of June monitoring to enhance road maintenance activities such as pothole repairs and grass cutting. And I want to briefly provide a more strategic overview of how my previous comments extend into the bigger picture. Members will be aware departments have been working on the delivery plans associated with the programme for government, and my department is no exception. A key programme for government indicator that I am leading on is to improve transport connections for people, goods and services. Over the summer, my officials have engaged with my other departments and a wide range of representatives from all sectors 
to develop an action plan to help deliver this indicator. The delivery plan contains my initiatives for a generational program of investment and change over a number of budgetary periods. I have ensured that my delivery plans for this indicator and my other key indicator to increase the use of public transport are both focused on reducing the infrastructure deficit, particularly in the West, in order to help mitigate key barriers to balanced regional growth. Excellent transport infrastructure is a prerequisite for growing the local economy and attracting inward investment. It enables communities to access jobs, education and leisure opportunities and allows businesses to connect to their markets. I am therefore determined to enhance connectivity and increase transport capacity across the region. My delivery plans contain a number of new initiatives in addition to the existing flagship road dueling schemes that will also positively impact on the Mid Ulster region. These include looking at the potential for more freestanding bypasses of towns to address pinch points on the roads network, and in addition, work is ongoing to carry out feasibility studies on improvements to the A29 Dungannon to Cookstown Road and the potential to extend the rail network to Dungannon. Of course, all of this activity depends on the appropriate resources being made available. My department has a capital budget of some £387 million, the largest of all the departments. However, as I have explained in previous debates, this is required to provide funding across a wide range of functions for which I have responsibility. These not only include roads, but water, wastewater, public transport, flood alleviation and waterways, all of which could utilise further funding if available. As such, I have to prioritise funding across all my department's functions to achieve a balanced outcome within the resources available. Given the budget allocation available to me, Additional capital for one area such as roads means less available for the other functions. However, I continue to make the case for increasing my department's budget, both through the in-year monitoring process for this year and as part of the Executive's Budget 2016 process. The role of roads, public transport and water infrastructure is vital in improving social inclusion and underpinning the region's economic growth. To conclude, I, as Minister, along with all members in this House, fully recognise the need to invest in world-class infrastructure if we are to realise our shared ambition to transform our economy and our society. I would therefore call on the support of all members of the House, particularly those members of the Infrastructure Committee, to do all that they can to ensure that my department receives the resources required to provide a better infrastructure from which we can all benefit. Turning specifically to a couple of points that was raised, uh, Ms. Overend raised the issue of slowing the traffic as they were coming through the villages and mentioned specifically uh, Desert Martin. I'd be more than happy to, to meet with you or to correspond with you in the future on this issue. Um, no doubt you're well aware, of course, that uh, PSNI and I the Minister take a bring role, his comments to a um, close. Take a lead role with regards to speed. Um, and of course, we need to be more strategic as we go forward. Um, so I'm happy enough to actually to draw that. Gormi, let me go. The Assembly is adjourned.